I, I drove a truck from Saudi Arabia to Holland. I'd broken down and uh, I was on my own. I was with two other trucks, but I'd got left behind. And these guys appeared out of the woods and started sort of playing around with this gun. Fired it around by over my head and stuff, you know, and I thought, oh shit, you know. And then my other mates, because we had no contact, but we had a thing, you know, if one of us sort of dropped back, it'd be because there was a problem. So my one of my mates appeared. He came back and then the guys just wandered off. We were in the same boat, you know. We all helped one another. But I was frightened to death to get back out of the truck again. Hello. Hello. Oh, Hello. 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 First, there's 60 miles of asphalt. After that, nothing. Nothing but trackless desert. Miles and miles of loose sand and sweltering heat. This is the last chance for a little socializing. Going into the unknown, how much water do you take? How much food do you take to survive? You're not gonna know when you're next replenishment food or water or fuel. They were brave guys in their day. You know, there are Arab drivers who specialize in this run, and even some of them get lost. 14 people are said to have simply vanished out there in less than a year. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not scared, but you have to admit, it's quite a challenge. Når vi er der, så er det noe helt annet som dukker opp, så er det nesten, ja, man må nesten bare ta det der og da, og finne ut av det. Men vi måtte jo det, vi måtte jo over Sandin, eller over, over de partiene, for å komme fram. Og fram skulle vi. Det var ikke noe bønn. Det er ikke noe statikk. Vi vil si at den beste måten å gjøre det, er å holde opp den samme trakken. Vi holder opp. On trips like this, it's vital to get as much good advice as possible. This guy knows quite a bit about the desert and warns me about some tricky spots. He also says I should change my large round diesel tank under the truck for another one with a different shape. Mine would get stuck in the sand when the wheels dig in, he says. Another tip he gives me is to keep as low tire pressures as possible when in loose sand. When the tire go down, obviously there's more width, you know, and it keeps you up higher, you know, you don't sink so much. With no map and no road signs, there's a very good chance of getting lost and no chance of help if something should happen. Enten måtte du kjøre 10 kilometer og satt i sånn vaskebrett, eller så måtte du kjøre 65-70 kilometer for å ligge og flyte oppå. Men så er det jo litt risiko å kjøre litt for fort i, for fort i sånne situasjoner. For det kunne jo hende det at det plutselig så var det en sanddyne en meter eller to rett ned. You, you just straight down. 
It looked the same on the surface, you know. I'd obviously let out too much air. After about half a mile, two of my tyres blew out. And I've only got two spares. Uh, if he'd had uh, another rear tyre blowout, he could have made, relied on the tyre alongside it, but a front one, he would have been down in the sand, stuck. How would he have got out of that? In those days, there were no mobile phones. You couldn't walk into a call box. You could die. You could definitely die. Really, I should have turned back and bought some new tyres, but I didn't give it that much thought. If you're an explorer, you're an explorer.